everyone, Random Randy here. This is Yarn Talk episode 33. So, good news and bad news about this episode. If you saw my tiny little update video that went up, I believe, yesterday, I had some technical issues and my computer decided that it wants nothing to do with acknowledging memory cards as existing in this plane anymore. So, I ordered a USB card reader and also an AV cable to go from my camera to my computer just in case that didn't solve the problem. Luckily, I haven't even had to take the AV cable out of the package because the card reader worked. There's some of the good news. Bad news. <laughs> I had two approximately 20 minute long chunks that I recorded of everything, and unfortunately only the second one worked. So I am attempting to recreate the first one now. Thankfully, I actually have notes. That never happens. So pretty much this entire episode is me talking about how the Lifeforms Festival went, letting you know what sold, what sort of figures and sales that I made, essential items to take with you, lots of vending tips for craft fairs. It is... 6 30 p.m ish right now so the lighting is horrible i have the ot light blinding me so i kind of look like i'm telling a spooky story because the lighting is coming up here in my face and it's awful regardless the kids are finishing up eating so they might bolt in i'm gonna do my best to get through the parts that i went over in the first portion of the video hopefully having the time because I know personally I don't like sitting through a video that's much more than 40 minutes, so I'm going to keep it as brief as possible without a lot of lengthy explanations for this portion, because there's going to be plenty of chatty stuff and you're going to see kind of a weird morphy cut and then I'll be magically wearing another outfit. It's not the Grammys, it's just <laughs> another video that I filmed two days ago. So anyway, I'm going to dive right into it. First, I'm going to talk about items that I did not have that I had at least one person ask for. There were also a few other crochet vendors at the craft fair, and apparently they weren't selling these things that people were looking for either. Where I was located, I was kind of at the back of the venue, depending upon which entrance you came through, but the entrance to the park was actually on the top of a hill. Up here was the hill and a whole bunch of vendors that were even in the grass, and I was way down in the back. However, the show actually did go pretty well, and I didn't take the canopy with me. Got there and they said, oh, do you have your pop-up? Because it's supposed to rain. I was like, no, you told me that I didn't have space for one. She's like, oh, well, maybe if the person who's over under the stairs over yonder will switch with you, if they have a pop-up, that might be a good idea because it's, it's probably going to rain later. I'm like, fantastic. So I called my husband and said, hey, I know it's a long drive, but could you maybe, could you maybe bring it? And he said, I don't think it'll fit in the car. So I was like, grumble, grumble, fairly unpleasant because I'd been up at six o'clock. Well, take that back. I had been up before six o'clock to leave the house before seven so I could be there by eight. And then he ended up rolling in with the kids at 10.30 shortly after the event opened and we put up the canopy and everything was good. It ended up raining at about 3.30 and it dumped buckets of water. But as anybody who's lived in Washington will tell you, it rains <laughs> a lot. The rain doesn't stop people here. People will carry on, most people had umbrellas or something they could be covered with, and the rain was a good thing because with me having the large canopy that I did, I had a lot of people take shelter under the tent and ended up buying stuff, so you can't really beat that. I also got to meet Tiffany, the Conscious Crafter. She is also on YouTube, and I got to see her adorable kids in person, and I think for the first time ever got to see her husband. I don't think I've ever seen him in any of the videos before, so that was kind of cool. I will actually pop up the picture that he took of us here, which I stole from her Instagram. If you follow either of us on Instagram, you've probably seen it already. But that was super cool. I wish that I had had more time to talk with her, but the foot traffic was honestly ridiculously amazing. And I 
almost couldn't keep up at some points with what I was selling and marking it down on my inventory sheet. But I'll get into all of that stuff in the second portion that's the other video. Anyway, items that were requested <laughs> that I did not have with me that I wish I did because a few of them were things that I had planned to do and then life happened and time marches on and it just didn't get done. So anyway, Mommy and Me hat sets. Specifically one with cat ears. I'd been toying with the idea of doing mommy and me or daddy and me sets for a while, but it's not something that I really thought people were interested in, so I hadn't done it. And now I kind of wish that I had had at least a few baby kid sized hats that matched a few of the adult hats so that I could have sold them together as a set. So that's something that somebody asked for. I had an older lady ask if I had washcloths in other colors. Unfortunately, washcloths, even though it's just a square, since I got caught up in making all of the amigurumis I was doing, I didn't have time to make more washcloths. All I had was orange and black. She said she loved the texture and she loved the size of them, but she was looking for other colors. So she did take one of my cards, but I don't really, I'm not banking on her actually buying anything from my Etsy shop. So washcloths in other colors, because I have this whole freaking shelf of nothing but cotton and all I had was orange and black washcloths and she just bleh. Anyhow, larger kid sized hats were another thing that somebody asked me for because the only thing I really had were baby sizes, a few toddler sizes and full on adult sizes. I have huge kids. I myself like my hats kind of loose, so I don't ever really think of those in-between sized people, even though in all other aspects of my clothing except headwear, <laughs> I am one of those in-between sized people. I don't quite wear a size 12 in pants, but I don't quite wear a size 11. I'm more of an 11 and a half. There is no such thing, to my knowledge, as an 11 and a half in women's pants. So super fun. You'd think that with me being a weird in between everything and my shoes are the same way. I'm a weird like quarter size. <laughs> a half size is too big. The regular one is too small. So bigger kid size hats like preteen to teen sized. Also plain unisex hats. I had the one just regular navy toque that was just a double crochet hat that was large woman to regular man adult size and I had somebody buy that and he asked if I had any other plain colors and I did not so that's something that I'm gonna have to consider stocking. I like working with variegated yarn. It's a lot easier for me to see it when I'm working on it. That's part of the reason that I enjoy variegated yarn is because if I look at the same color for too long, one solid color, my mind just kind of goes bleh, and it just kills my productivity. It's horrible. So anyway, plain unisex hats. I also had somebody who purchased one of the open mesh headscarves. She bought the purple scrappy one, asked if I had any other colors in that. So I talked about making more of those, didn't actually get to make any before the show. So I'm gonna have to stock up on a couple of those and other colors to throw up in the shop. I wish I wish personally that I had had more amigurumi with me because I sold everything in regards to amigurumis with the exception of these two candy corn with the faces, the little Count Cornula and the corn clops. So since I sold the regular faced one with the two little ones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these up in my Etsy shop as I sat with one with the face with two plain ones. So I made these today. I've got another one almost finished and I'm almost and I'll be starting I'll be finishing a second one before the night's out. So I'm just gonna I might make a few more with faces to put up in my shop. I'm not sure. As far as my Etsy shop goes I know that I am horrible. Oh so horrible about actually doing anything with it. I just recently put some of my listings back on promotion, so I'm getting some views again. I think 
after pondering it for a while earlier, that I'm going to plan to do an Etsy shop update every other Friday. That way I can plan for it, I can have everything ready to go, I can get all my pictures taken beforehand, I can have all my prices set, not have to worry about it because trying to commit myself to I'm gonna do like five Etsy listings a day raw I get so excited about it and then by the time I'm through listing three I'm like Poof, just totally over it it is my least favorite thing about having an Etsy shop to the point where I wish I made enough money that I could hire someone to do it for me because I would hire someone to write and post my listings. I kid you not, it is the bane of my existence. Anyhow, I specifically wish that I had more octopi with me, the little teeny ones, like this one that I actually made last night. This is just Red Heart Super Saver green tones, and he's got some little red eyeballs. Maybe it'll focus on it. There we go. Red eyeballs. I was actually thinking of giving this one little wings, because the color scheme and the red eyes just made me think Cthulhu. But anyway, narwhals and octopi. When I... <laughs> Tiffany actually bought one of the narwhals, her son wanted it, and the other one a lady bought later and she asked if I had any more and I said, no I don't right now, but I really wish I did. <laughs> so yeah, that. I also had somebody come through asking if I had any crossbody bags. When I first started crocheting, I have to say I was probably in middle school. I can't remember if it was middle school or early high school. So it might have been somewhere in the range of 7th to ninth grade when I was first learning to crochet. I would make little bags out of granny squares and line them with muslin and make a big long strap that would go all the way around and sold them to people at school. Which is horrible, you're not supposed to do that but I did it anyway. Bad me. So <laughs> she was looking for something that would just be big enough for say a phone and a wallet. So it wouldn't have to be these immense giant messenger bags, but making bags is something that I've been wanting to consider doing as far as crocheting bags, not sewing bags. I know a lot of people who have a handmade business, especially revolving around yarn, branch off into sewing project bags, which are super cool. That's just not something that I want to do. I don't want to make tons and tons and tons of the exact same item. I don't, I don't like that assembly line production style. It's just not my thing. I was trying to think of a more efficient way to make amigurumis and I might be able to do them that way. For instance, make a bunch of heads, make a bunch of tentacles, or make a bunch of arms and legs after making bodies and heads for larger critters. Something to that effect is about as assembly line as I can get without feeling like I'm working in a factory and the creative element has been removed and sucked out of my soul. So <laughs> after that ramble, the <laughs> The last item that was asked for was crossbody bags. So I'm thinking about doing that, possibly lining them so I would still be sewing a bit. And if I was going to sew a lining, I would machine sew it because you want that stuff to hold up. Not that my hand sewing is bad, but it would be much more efficient to do it with the machine, with the $300 brother sewing machine that I have that hardly ever gets used. So moving on, I'm going to get into the items that I sold, right? Yes. Okay. Items that I sold. I am just going to go through the list of things that did sell because there is absolutely no cohesion or trend to what I did sell. A lot of people will say, oh, well, people were mostly looking for this or mostly looking for that. I had people buy a little bit of everything. It was really weird to me. So I'm going to go through this list and then after that the video will be switching over so that you can hear 
about how much I made and how I did. So the items that sold, and if you want to see any of these items, because I'm just going to give the name that I use for them, check out my lookbook video that shows pretty much everything I had that I was working on tagging to take to the show with me. So I sold 26 items at the craft fair and I took 97 with me. A few of them were duplicate things like the candy corn and I had a few Pokeball kid-sized hats that were the same. So what I sold, blue swirl hat and the northern light slouch both went to the same woman. Sold the navy toque as I mentioned before. Sold a chunky pink gray and black hat I had one that was fitted more like a toque, and I also had one that was really long and slouchy. Both of them had pom-poms. Both of those sold. I sold the cabled knit hat that I made out of homespun, which was one of the first hats that I ever knitted. I found that working with homespun is a lot easier when you're knitting it than it is when you're crocheting unless you have a giant hook. Also sold the purple Nico or cat-eared slouch, the one that I made in the tutorial for how to make kitty ears. Also sold a green octopus hat, the red and silver rosy wrap, a sexy devil hat, the red one with the black horns, a white and silver pom-pom baby hat, one pokeball kid-sized hat, a baby hat that I called the constellation baby hat. It was blue and yellow and gray and black and it was just really cool the way it's striped. Also sold the purple mesh scarf. I sold both of the zero lovies that I made. I sold two of the eco-friendly yarn scrap coffee sleeves which I also had a few people because I didn't I wanted to get the cardstock sleeves printed out that made it look like it was a coffee cup so it would be wrapped around it so people would know what its purpose was but I actually had a few people who thought that they were wristbands and with the size of them you could honestly wear them as wristbands anyway sold two of those sold both of the narwhals sold both of the small candy corn one of the large monster candy corns those went to the same person also sold the little pink voodoo doll that I had the one octopus that I had with me, and one copy of my book. So I did a lot better than I was expecting to, and if it weren't for the fact that I had just recently purchased the canopy, which I ended up needing, it would have been a very profitable fare. As it stands, I really just need one or two sales on Etsy, and that canopy is going to be completely paid for, and my booth fee was completely covered by what I made. So I'm going to cut this part here and it's going to lead right into all of the other stuff. So I'm super pleased with that and I'm glad that the miscommunication about the canopy was cleared up. So now to number stuff. As far as what I made, I am super glad I had my PayPal card reader with me because I did a large chunk of sales with credit. So cash, I had $244.50. That's all together, that's before I subtracted my bank. I also did $120 in credit card sales, so all together that's $364.50. I had a $57 starting bank. I know that sounds really weird, but I took out I used my card and took out, got $20 in cash back, and then took that $20 and spent it on, I bought a drink for myself, I bought another drink at a separate location, and then I used the third 20 to get myself, like, cookies or something stupid and small, so it ended up taking out from what would have just been 60 straight dollars starting bank. So after subtracting the bank, $307.50 is what I ended up making altogether. Now, taking the $307.50 into account, I spent for this event $150 for the booth space, and the leg weights and the canopy were $190. So, adding up just those two big items, the booth cost and the canopy, that's 
340 minus the $307.50 I made means that I am now only $32.50 in the red. That means this event almost completely paid for the canopy and did completely pay for my booth space. That means any other events that I do this year, the canopy will be completely paid off. Any other online sales that I have, $32.50, essentially that's one hat. That's one octopus hat or one hat with horns and it's all paid for and everything from there is profit. If I didn't have the canopy and the weather had been awesome, then I would have doubled what I paid for the booth, which I think is pretty amazing. I had maybe 10 minutes total all day where I was able to sit down and it started raining at about 3.30 and rained until about 5 o'clock off and on and a bunch of people as soon as it started to rain packed up and left. I didn't because I paid $150 to be there. I was gonna stay there until they said it was time to pack up at 6 o'clock. So a lot of people came in just to get shelter from the rain and looked around and bought stuff. There were some points where I had people buying things so quickly that once they finally left and I had a lull, I had to think for a minute like, oh my god, what did I just sell? Like, I know I'm going to be able to add up my money at the end of the day, but I want to be able to mark off on my inventory sheet what sold. So eventually I got it under control, but there was, it was a lot busier than I was expecting it to be, which was nice very very pleased overall with the event. So the items that I would strongly suggest having for any crafting event and a few of them are specifically for outdoor events. Obviously you're going to want your tables, you're going to want your tablecloth, whatever your cover is going to be for the table. I included some pictures at the beginning so you'll see what my table setup looked like. You're going to want, if you're somebody who sells hats, most of these things apply to yarn art, so there are some things that if you're doing other crafty things you won't need them, but anyway. Mannequin heads, the little styrofoam ones, or if you have a slightly more expensive one that's got a long neck or a partial bust, whatever. You want something so people can see what your items look like, because laying flat on a table they're not going to get a proper idea of what it all is. So at the beginning I included some pictures of what my booth looked like so that you can get an idea of what my setup was and you will also notice on top of the mannequin heads that I also had my adjustable dress form there to show off some of my actual apparel items. If I had known for sure that I was going to have my canopy there I would have brought some of my half clamshell mannequins to display some of my crop tops because even though it's getting to be cooler weather people still vacation in warm places, people are still moving from here to warm places. So there's that. Other thing that I thought was amazing that you will notice from looking at the picture of my booth that the smaller table is much lower to the ground than the larger table. There's a very good reason for that. One of the most important things in visual merchandising is creating visual interest. That means making different heights of things so that people's eyes are made to wander and try and take everything in and they actually absorb it better that way. One of the best items that I had with me, these are called bed lifts or bed risers. There are four of them. I got them for $8 at Target. They will lift your table up higher, so if you're sitting behind it, it's not going to be doing you much good, but since hopefully you're going to be on your feet for most of the show anyway, trying to talk to people, it's totally fine. It makes things so people don't have to stoop down to look at things. It keeps grabby little people from nicking everything on your table and scattering it to the winds. Highly recommend it. If I do another show, I will probably have another slightly larger table than my square one because it's my teeny little workspace in the craft room and I had to <laughs> unload everything off of it and just set it on the floor so I could pack up the table and take it with me. So I'd probably get another longer table for next time. So I'll probably also get another set of lifters so that they're on the same level or I'll leave it at ground level for more of the varying heights. 
Other super important thing that I do not have right next to me is your card reader. You, if you're going to be doing anything, a lot of people don't carry cash. Don't get me wrong. I did more cash sales than credit sales. However, I did $120 in credit sales. That's a lot of money I would have missed out on had I only taken cash. So card reader plugs into the headphone jack on your phone. I actually had to take the case off of mine to get a solid connection. Mine is the PayPal card reader. There's also the Square card reader. I think there's a few other brands that you can get now. Pretty much do your research, figure out which fees and percentages you're okay with. For me, it made the most sense since I already do so much business through PayPal to just use PayPal's. It didn't cost me any money to get the little device and I think they take a very small percentage of each sale. So it was definitely worth it to have a card reader. And yes, my phone is giant. I have an old Note 4 with an OtterBox case so my kids don't destroy it when they grab it and throw it in a fit of rage. So card reader. Also, some sort of bag to put customers' items in. This particular event was a very eclectic, crunchy, hippie event, so I'm honestly surprised that anybody wanted a plastic bag. If you can go with a more eco-friendly option, by all means do so. If not, I bought a giant box of, I wanna say, either a thousand or fifteen hundred, just, they're grocery-sized bags and they just say thank you on it. You can go a more expensive route and get something that has your name branded on it. You could get paper bags and staple business cards to it or put your name on it in some way. Whatever, there will be some people who will want a bag to put their stuff in. So definitely have that. Having tags on your items, in my opinion, is better than just signs. If you have... Something that I wanted to do with my washcloths and didn't get to do because by the time I was done remaking my business cards, it was 12.30 the night before the event. If you have a box of something where, like washcloths, where you say, okay, it's $6 a piece or two for 10, then you can just make a little sign for that as long as you have it in an enclosed location so people don't try to say, oh, so that item over there is two for $10, the $30 hat, and you can be like, no, don't be a jerk, learn to read. Don't really say that, but you can think it really loud. I've, <laughs> I've done customer service for enough years that there are some times that people will say things to you that make you wonder how they are living because their brain is clearly non-functional. Anyway meanness of dealing with people aside. You want to tag your items. If all of your items of the same type are one price, you can do signs. I much preferred tagging, so a tag gun is also a must. Your tags are necessary. My tags, just to give you an idea of what all is on it, has my business name, has my Etsy shop, has a logo, also contains size, materials, care instructions, and the price. On the back of it is where I put my item numbers that I used for my inventory sheet, and on most of them I also wrote on the bottom what the item was. In this case, I wrote it on the front because I was at the event and I was in a hurry and I really just didn't care. I wanted prices on everything so customers wouldn't have to ask. I know that some people prefer the, oh well the customers will approach you and ask what the price is method personally, as a customer, not even as a business owner. I don't want to have to ask how much something costs. If there isn't clear signage and there isn't a tag on it, I'm going to assume that it's so expensive that it's going to make my head spin and I just don't want to know. So tags might be a good idea. So tags or having clear signage that tells everybody what things are priced at. So nobody has to ask unless they want to. And sometimes even having tags with the prices clearly written on them people will still ask you, and that's fine. Other important thing to have, business cards. These are my new ones that I made. As I said, I finished getting them done and printed at 12.30 at night, the night before. I was actually, because I have the self-print perforated sheets of business cards, I just got the Office Depot brand. 
I was actually taking them apart at the show for the most part. I think I had two sheets worth already separated and I did the rest of them whenever I had a spare second during the day. But business name, shop name, my name, Facebook page, Instagram. I also have my YouTube on there. I have Twitter and I have a little QR code that if somebody were to scan this with their phone, it would take them to my YouTube channel. And it has a few pictures of the products I've made, which are kind of my signature items now. And I also have my company tagline, which is cute and a tad sinister. Primarily because I make stuff that's a little bit weird and people think that it's both creepy and adorable. So there's that. Business cards. Take lots of them. I had over a hundred. I didn't count them or anything when I got back, but I want to say I gave out probably 10, 15 of them. Other thing that you will want is some sort of a sign or banner with your business name on it. I actually have one of those clear acrylic sign stands and I just have one printed off full size letter page that has all my business information on it. I actually wanted to make an updated one that has all of this stuff that's on my new business card, but as I said, it was really, really late and I just didn't have it in me to do more Photoshop junk at that time of night. And you also want to have on there if you accept cash and credit. People will still ask, but it's also good to have it displayed because like I said before, some people just don't want to ask. They want to just know, pay you, and leave. That's just the nature of people sometimes. Potential thing to have with you for any sort of vending event is seasonal decor. You might have some events that are Halloween specific or Christmas specific or spring, Easter, whatever. As far as seasonal decor, you'll notice that I had the dripping blood tablecloths. I actually have a giant I want to say it's like a 30 or 40 foot roll of it that I got from Oriental Trading Company a few years ago and I just rolled it out to the length I wanted, snipped it off, and taped it on. There you go. I also had little battery powered candles like this. I had two of these which is good because at one point the sky was actually so dark that these were actually emitting light but they're just battery powered and they flicker Got two of these, they were three bucks each at Target. I considered getting an orange and a purple, so I had alternating colors, but then I just went with two orange ones because that was, matching seemed better to me. So, seasonal decor. If you're going to an outdoor event and it's potential that the weather is going to be garbage, or even if it's just going to be windy, you will probably want a canopy or a pop-up, whatever you want to call it. You may also want walls for that same canopy. You will also need weights for the legs because if it's super windy, you don't want your canopy to blow away. Another important thing is on your tables to have some sort of changes in height, whether it's through pre-purchase things or if you do like I did, you'll see I have a red box that is on top of my table. That is one of the risers that I use. It's just a box that I got from when the post office sent me a bunch of priority mail boxes. I just used that same box. I covered it in wrapping paper all except the back side. I actually open that up and keep my inventory list and my tag gun and everything inside of there so everything is kind of contained but you want to have that those height changes going on on the table so that people are moving their eyes around to see different things so they catch everything that you're trying to sell. Other things to hold your items on rather than just laying it flat on the table. Some people use metal grids and the pegs that lock into them. I might look into getting a small portion of those because it would be a lot easier for me to have a sort of backdrop on my table to have things hanging and then still have things laid out flat. 
you'll see in my pictures that there's the wooden small clothesline thing that my husband made which is super cute. I'm actually thinking of painting that so that it'll kind of blend more with my whole theme. Other things that you will definitely want to have regardless of what craft you're doing. Scissors, masking tape for putting anything down that's trying to blow away especially if you're outside. In my case I used it to tack the dripping blood tablecloth to the giant duvet cover that's underneath it. That's actually what the black and white table covering is on my big table. It's it's a queen size bed cover. It's very thin. It's one of the ones that you put the fluffy insert in it. So scissors, masking tape, a notebook for writing down all sorts of various things like things people are asking for that you don't have keeping track of your inventory if you don't have a specific inventory sheet. Pens, multiple pens, not just one, because you know if you only take one, that pen is going to die. Murphy's Law, it's going to happen. Just cover your bases, take multiple pens, and pencils if you're more of a pencil person. Also, a clipboard. I have my inventory sheets on a clipboard because if you're standing and you don't get an opportunity to sit down, like I didn't pretty much all day yesterday and my thighs and back are killing me for it, you're going to want to be able to write clearly. Another thing that you may want to have is if you take custom orders, you may want to have some sort of a sheet. I also have a custom order lookbook that I did which has pictures and sizing information on a few of the items that I do make but didn't have any made of while I was there so people can look through that to see what other sort of things you offer. It's just a good idea to have it with you. So that is everything from my notes and this video is going to be excessively long and I'm sorry for that but hopefully there will be some information in here that will help you in regards to having success at a vending opportunity. And I am going to take a few minutes to breathe and finish up my coffee. My third, third or fourth cup today, I don't even know. But finish up my coffee <laughs> and get back to finishing up this hat that I've started and get Killian up from his nap soon. So thank you so much for watching everybody. I am now at 310 subscribers, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all so much for coming back and hanging out with me and talking yarny stuff because that's what we all love. And I will be getting that black rose bag. I will start collecting items to put in it to fill it up for the giveaway. And once I get that done, I will make an announcement on what exactly I'm going to want you all to do. And I will have more on that later. Check me out on social media. All of the links to that are below. If there's anything that I make that you've seen before that you would like to purchase if you are not a maker yourself, feel free to check out my Etsy shop. There's going to be a lot of stuff going in there in the next couple of weeks, especially since I'm looking right now for another show to do later this year before Christmas. Be nice to get in on a holiday show or two. Be really, really nice. But all in all, I am just totally blown away by the success that I had at the show and the Seattle Unique Boutique. Who were the people who organized it, did a fantastic job, everybody was there, they had a group of people going around asking if people needed bathroom breaks. It was, it was great. It was kind of hectic at first and like I said, I was reasonably upset beforehand and it got better. Like I said, it sucked and I looked for the positives and I found them and it made more positive. So it's totally okay to be bummed out. It's totally okay to be upset about things. Try not to take it out on the people around you, and as soon as you get the opportunity, once you've wallowed in whatever your self-pity is for a few minutes, start looking for the decent things, because there's got to be something good in every situation, no matter what it is. And on that ridiculous philosophical note, I'm going to cut it here, and I will catch you all next time. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye.